Welcome to this special tribute as we give God thanks for the legacy of faithful leadership that we have enjoyed over the past 35 years in the life of our denomination. There are five specially called and gifted persons who have provided leadership over this 35-year period. These faithful five are Adele Fires, Kenneth Teagarden, John Humbert, William Nichols, and Richard Hamm. Each one has led us through periods of transformation that has empowered and strengthened us for the future. Alan Dale Fires, our first general minister and president of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Dr. Fires was born in Kankakee, Illinois and reared in West Palm Beach, Florida. After serving several pastorates in Ohio, he served as president of the United Christian Missionary Society. This was instrumental in the formation of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Dr. Fires offered a steadying presence at a time of tremendous organizational transition in which we moved from being a loosely knit brotherhood, as it was called, to being an officially recognized denomination. He provided a beacon of strength and wisdom for the restructure process. He was doubly blessed, first in marriage to Betty, and later after her death in marriage to Virginia. He and Betty had two children, Barbara and Alan Dale Jr. I taught Sunday school and got to preach frequently. And I thought that uh, I was in this business to save souls. So I, I preached one time and gave the invitation and 10 or more young people came forward, made their confession of faith. My mother wrote me wonderful letters, and frequently she would conclude it with this salutation. May God give you many souls for your hire. And I don't know what the heck she meant by that, but I, it dawned on me that, that your compensation in ministry could not be put in dollars and cents, but in with people. Talk with us a little bit about disciple history and polity. When we first started as a movement, there was a feeling that nothing else was church but the local congregation. Uh, and yet, the, the desire to, to have cooperative work on the mission field uh, at home and so forth was so strong that uh, that there was a great hue and cry for togetherness. The big step forward was the uh, establishing of the Council of Agencies, which consisted of every uh, regional, every national unit, and all colleges and institutions, about 90, I think, all together at one time. It was out of the council's work, out of this togetherness, we had found that the idea of restructure was born. And you have to understand that restructure came because of a very real reason, a shift in our understanding of the church. Back early on, when they didn't believe anything was church except the local congregation, the desire to conduct missions and do all of these other things uh, was so great that they found a way to do it. One of, one of the leaders of the council, he was president of Christian Theological Seminary, he said that wherever they meet, Disciples act like the church. They preach, they uh, plan, they, uh, they do things together. It was in 19, it was 1968 when we adopted the design and, and we elected provisional. I was provisional general minister. And Ronald Osborne was provisional moderator to carry us over to the first meeting which was in Seattle, Washington in 1969 when all of this was made official. You were our first 
General Minister and President of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the United States and Canada, and you served during the years 1968 to 1973. Share with us some of the highlights of that time in which you served as our General Minister and President. Well, one thing, in the, in the days when we were promoting restructure, I traveled from one end of this country to another, trying to interpret, and holding conferences, preaching in churches. The big idea, the big idea uh, of the whole thing was that we want, wanted to make the transition from a group of local churches to a manifestation of the church which included the manifestation of of local, regional, and general. I don't know how many people have really caught the significance of uh, going from a loose-knit fellowship of congregations to a church. What are your hopes and prayers for the future of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ? Well, I hope, I hope the church will grow not only in numbers, but uh, in its, uh, in its self-image, in its actual uh, life. Uh, we've lost a lot of members, as you know, a lot of congregations. And I'm grateful that Dick Ham, our present general minister and president, has written a book which he calls uh, A Vision, 2020 Vision. Uh, and uh, puts down what he would like to happen in the church by 2020. Dr. Fires, do you have any other words of wisdom or encouragement that you would like to share with pastors or with congregations? Well, this is a great day to be a minister of a church. I think it requires more knowledge, more stick to more diplomacy, more courage than at any time in my active years. Uh, but it, it's, it, it, if I were starting over, I'd do it again. Thank you.